Good evening, this is Brass Tax, I'm Zaka Jacob. The parliament session has finally come to an end. Only one bill was passed in this entire session. The lower house functioned for less than a fifth of its allocated time and the upper house functioned for less than a tenth of its allocated time. The question then is, why are we the taxpayers being fleeced? Because politicians cannot see eye to eye. The total amount of money that's been wasted in just this one session of parliament is over 150 crores. The Congress wants Rahul Gandhi's disqualification quash. The BJP wants Rahul Gandhi to apologize because of the comments that he made abroad. And caught in between these two political affiliations and these two political extremes are we, the people of India. Sloganeering, chants, ruckus, total chaos. These were the scenes inside the parliament today on the last day of the second leg of the budget session. Disruptions in parliament are not new, but perhaps this was the first time with the blame was squarely on both sides of the aisle. Opposition continued demanding a joint parliamentary committee on the Adani issue, skipped the courtesy meet called by the speaker and staged a Tiranga Yatra from parliament. While the BJP remained adamant on their demand of apology from Congress leader Rahul Gandhi for his remark on Savarkar and the OBC community. If you want to keep the opposition, then you should listen to the opposition. And they are in the middle of it. The last day, Congress and their members काले कपड़े पहन करके संसद का फिर से अपमान किया द सेशन मे नॉट हैव बीन अ कंप्लीट वॉश आउट इट डिड गिव इट्स नॉट टू द बजट अ टोटल ऑफ 38 बिल्स वर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड 28 बिल्स वर पास्ड सिंस द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ द 17th लोकसभा fewer than 10 bills have been introduced or passed in each of the last four consecutive sessions so the 17th Lok Sabha is unlikely to sit for more than 331 days, which could make it the shortest full-term Lok Sabha since 1952. Today, Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed party workers on the occasion of BJP Foundation Day and launched a scathing attack on Congress, calling it a corrupt party, and once again set the tone for 2024. Targeting opposition parties, the PM said the party is in power since independence had not given up the colonial mindset and continue to treat people as slaves. Article जो काम दशकों तक सरकार चलाने वाले नहीं कर सके, वो काम भाजपा सरकार कैसे कर रही है? Productivity in Lok Sabha has been as low as 33 percent. In Rajya Sabha, just 24 percent. Out of the stipulated minimum 150 hours, the houses have functioned only for 46 and 32 hours respectively. Please be in our chair. Let us allow the time spent on legislation was an abysmal half hour and money loss stands at approximately 160 crore. The time lost is over 111 hours. So, as politics took precedence over policy, who's responsible for wasting taxpayer money? Bureau Report, CNN News 18. So in this entire session, just one bill was passed, and that too by the Lok Sabha. The Rajya Sabha passed zero bills. 166 crores is the money that's gone down the drain because of this colossal waste called Parliament, because there is absolutely no functioning of it. Let me now go across to our guests who are joining us uh, from all sides of the aisle. Uh, Rakesh Sinha, BJP Member of Parliament, Rohan Gupta, Congress Spokesperson, Amar Patnaik, is Member of Parliament from the Biju Janta Dal. Karanadi Viraswamy is a Member of Parliament from the DMK. Uh, Rakesh Sinha, let me start with you, Professor. Because 
you know, the business of running the house, or at least the onus of running the house, is on the government. Uh, and the point is that the government, yes, this is a, a piquant situation for much of the session where we saw uh, government representatives, treasury benches holding up both houses of parliament asking for Mr. Rahul Gandhi to apologize. And then in the subsequent latter half of this session, we had Congress members holding up the uh, uh, both houses of parliament saying, uh, one, Adani JPC and B, that Mr. Gandhi's disqualification be revoked by the Lok Sabha. The point is that at the end of the day, just one bill got passed in a session that lasted a month and a half and 166 crores of taxpayer money has been wasted. Who is responsible for this? You know, the, there is a business advisory committee which decides the schedule of the session. And that uh, business advisory committee where opposition party uh, members are also there, they decide, they allocated time for discussion on budget and, and, and other bills. The times have been allocated. But instead of having discussion on that, the opposition parties uh, started do, doing something which is undesirable in parliamentary democracy. When you are disrupting the question hour, when you are disrupting the zero hour, in fact question hours and zero hour are meant for the members not for the government. This fixes the accountability of the government. When we raise the question of zero hour, even as a member of the treasury bench, I raised so many questions, so many supplementary questions. Sometimes ministers embarrass us. This is the, this is the functioning of the parliamentary democracy. And you are killing that. And you, demand, you are demanding something where they already the clarification come, came from the institutions. You don't believe in the institution. Parliament is everything. I, I consider Parliament is sovereign. But that does not mean that you will kill all the institutions. Okay. The things which you have raised, that there are the layers of the institution, there is a hierarchy of the institution in, in parliamentary democracy. They are accountable for that. They have given clarification. Things have come where finance minister said something. But you want to disrupt. The parliament cannot be run by the agenda of the dynastic, uh, dynasty. Parliament cannot be run on the basis of the safety and glorification of the dynasty. Okay. Uh, as far as ruling party is concerned, our is very small demand, very small demand. Rahul Gandhi, who is part of the parliamentary democracy, what did he say in the uh, Cambridge University? Is it a reality? You are free to express yourself. Everybody is free to express any part of the globe. But you are saying something which is, which is like undoing the parliamentary democracy, nobody can tolerate. Okay. Degrading the country, degrading the democratic tradition of the country. The moment when Prime Minister declared India is the oldest home of democracy, at the same juncture we went there to say that there is no democracy in India. Every time, this time also the Congress representative will abuse the Prime Minister. Okay. Will do everything which is not expected. Still they will say there is no democracy. I don't know what is the definition of democracy. So, so let me ask Rohan Gupta, Party. you know the matter concerning Mr. Gandhi was decided by a court of law. He is now appealed against that verdict. And the disqualification decision was taken by the Lok Sabha Secretariat. Why are you holding up both houses of parliament on these issues which have nothing to do with the people of this country or taxpayer money? 166 crores, Rohan, is the money that's been lost in just this one session alone. The 17th Lok Sabha, by the way, the current Lok Sabha will go down in history with the record of having passed the fewest bills and had the fewest number of hours in terms of sessions. Is that what the people of India deserve in the 21st century? As you started your, uh, your uh, point saying that it's the responsibility of ruling party to run parliament. Yeah, yeah. And what are we hmm. talking about people of the country? Yeah, yeah. We see that tax so of course in Adani shares. And what we ask for is JPC. JPC, there is a resolution, there is a provision of JPC in our parliament. This is not the first time we are asking. When Congress was in power, we appointed JPC. If the government feels that nothing is happened wrong or nothing is happened wrong to the people and lacks of force have been wiped out like that only, why they are shying away from appointing JPC? Is it too much to ask from the population? I don't think so. It is our responsibility to protect the interest of the people. So let me remind you that this, this logjam is because of the issues of people where this government, even after nine years of being power, they are acting like they are in opposition because they know. I, I, I don't deny the fact that they know that if the JP is formed, JPC is formed, they will be exposed. So they don't have any option other than to ensure that this parliament doesn't work. So I think BJP in that way is successful in ensuring that this session doesn't work. 
and you are talking about mr rahul gandhi it is bjp who has accused mr rahul gandhi of speaking against country outside the country so we just said that as a parliamentary mr rahul gandhi All right, we'll, we'll try and fix uh, Rohan's audio in just a second. But uh, I, I just want to bring this to the attention of our viewers, and I'll get Amar Patnaik and then Mr. Veera Sami to respond to this. Uh, the number of working hours that is stipulated for both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha is 150 hours uh, throughout this session. Instead, they met for all of uh, 39 hours, both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha put together. They were meant to meet for 25 days, from the 31st of January till the 6th of April. which means 150 hours the total cost the total money that's been lost because parliament sat for both houses sat for less than 40 hours out of the 300 that is demanded from both houses the total money lost mr amar patnaik is 166 crores now who is going to refund the taxpayer this money is it the treasury benches or is it the opposition because the people of india should not be putting up with this see uh, you know it's a very painful uh, uh, experience for me as a first time member of parliament uh, in the in the in the upper house the uh, point here is uh, not just the question of uh, refund of the taxpayers money it is a much larger issue the larger issue is because you know there's just 1% of the people who or 1.5% who pay taxes what is more important is that 140 uh, you know crore people are watching this temple of democracy and seeing demo- uh, and expect to see uh, democracy uh, in full flow or democracy in uh, being enacted now this is where we are we we have uh, i'm going beyond party lines to say that uh, you know as members of parliament we have to realize that we are answerable to each one of these 140 crore people now what is their expectation from mem- from their representative to see that their issues are raised to see that their demands are met to see what is the response of the legislature to their concerns the concerns that plague them right from let's say probably food shelter security and many other things okay now there are issues of national interest also which also have to be discussed i don't really understand why only two or three issues uh, you know which are probably central to yeah. some of the uh, larger parties fail to understand that there are smaller parties representing states and their interests some of the states which are very poor which they look up to the center for allocation they look up to the center for additional resources they look up to the center for money which has probably not been given to them under various schemes they look up to the center to discuss issues relating to inflation to uh, to probably you know farmers looking up to see like from in my state uh, waiting to see what would be center's response to procurement of their hard earned uh, uh, procurement of their you know the toil that has gone into okay. uh, paddy production so i think it is much beyond taxpayers uh, money it is actually uh, what we are giving to 140 crore people of this country as a, as 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 one of the largest democracy as the largest democracy in the world and how we are making democracy function okay. are people going to have faith on the system on the democracy itself or are they going to lose faith on the system itself so so let me ask kalanidhi so kalanidhi veerasamy I, i just this is from prs the parliamentary research services uh only one bill mr vera sami the competition yes. amendment bill of 2022 was passed during this session of course the finance and appropriation bills were passed as well since the first yes. session of this current lok sabha the 17th lok sabha a total of 38 bills were introduced and 28 were passed the number of bills introduced and passed has declined fewer than 10 bills have been introduced or passed in each of the last four consecutive sessions in fact the current lok sabha the 17th lok sabha could end up being the shortest full term lok sabha since 1952 do you think that that's what the people of india voted for and yes a bulk of that responsibility is on the treasury branches i'm not taking that away but you guys were elected too the opposition yes. still has today more than 200 members of parliament uh, in lok sabha alone it's yes. not like the people of india did not vote for them did they vote yes. for having the shortest tenure session of parliament in the history of this country since 1952 uh shall i respond yes sir 
Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Mr. Virasamy, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, good evening to everybody. And uh, see, uh, it is regrettable that uh, the parliament has been stalled where uh, the second leg of uh, this budget session has been uh, complete by out. Like you said, even the opposition party members are are not. We are not happy about uh, the way things are being uh, taken up. But you should understand that, like you rightly said, when opposition parties have a responsibility of running the parliament, it the more responsibility lies with the treasury benches for ensuring that the parliament uh, runs smoothly. In fact, the ministers, I was told that in earlier uh, the 16th and 15th and uh, earlier. Uh, uh, parliaments, uh, the ministers used to plead with the opposition leaders to make sure that the parliament functions effectively. But here, curiously, we are seeing a state where uh, a member who is not there in the house, the ministers are instigating the members of parliament in their, from their party, the treasury benches, ministers are instigating them to get up and shout sloganering and they have stalled this for quite a few days in this, uh, uh, in this, uh, in this session. So I would like to ask the ruling government whether they are not, because see, they do not want this uh, issue of Adani discussed at all. And when Rahul Gandhi had uh, asked several pointed questions about Adani, uh, it was very curious and uh, I mean, like very perplexing about why the, the, uh, most of his statements, I mean, like referring to Adani, were removed from the uh, records of the parliament. And when they, when you expunge something like that, we feel that there is a sinister motive. Okay. And we are trying to. But Mr. Uh, Virasamy, you the, are aware, and I'm uh, sure the uh, the honourable members of the opposition are aware that no less than the Supreme Court of India has appointed a committee of very very eminent and capable personalities to look into this matter. Now, either you don't have faith in that committee and thereby no, the Supreme Court no, of India, no. let me, let, or you let believe me, the me. JPC is better equipped to. Uh, uh, to investigate this, it's got to be uh, one of no. these two. No, let, let me let me explain. See, the Supreme Court, what it has directed is uh, to identify the uh, uh, any irregularities in SEBI or uh, these details. They are not going to go into the total depth of whatever uh, financial transactions have happened through Mauritius and all those details. We are not, I mean, uh, uh, sure of that. And you have to understand that be it the uh, Congress government or even Vajpayee government. When the opposition has raised an issue where everybody concerned, see, this has been going on for the last three years. And till the Hindenburg report uh, came out, uh, I mean, like most of the people were only talking about this in parliament, but now it has become where everybody is aware of what is happening. Okay. And in fact, there are a so lot of questions let me ask, about uh, uh, the directorate uh, of revenue Rakesh intelligence. They had, you know, uh, uh, it comes back to this one moot issue, which the opposition says the government is reluctant to address or Adam reluctant to, yeah, the fundamentally it boils yeah. down to the Adani issue. Now, the yes. point is, leave aside, Professor Sinha, what the Supreme Court has ordered. What the opposition is asking is, what is the reluctance and why is there this grave reluctance by the government to constitute a JPC? When UPA was in power, you wanted JPC for 2G, there was a JPC for 2G. You wanted JPC yeah. for the Commonwealth Games, there was a JPC for the Commonwealth even, even Games. Even for the Bofors. Uh, uh, you go back all the way to the 1980s and Bofors no, also had a I, JPC. Why is the government loath to having a JPC no, I, I, on the Adani matter? No, I think you can pick up any matter from the planet and can say that there can be JPC. Then no, never parliament can function. It can never function. Because How many here is two fundamental How many things. Have we when, when, let, let, me, let, me, let, me come, let me complete. When the issue has been raised, the government responded. But the opposition considered that everything should come from Prime Minister. If there is any communal right, Prime Minister should give a statement. You see, from, right from 2014, anti-Modism is so much ingrained in the opposition parties and their intellectuals. They are, they are not ready to accept the mandate of the people. It is not the question of Adani and the GPC. You see what happened in 2014. There was no Adani. There was no question of JPC. People came on the road in the street to return the awards. Award Vapsi Gang. What happened then? Modi ji had not done anything. He started Jandhan scheme that time. Was Jandhan wrong? Question is that when India is emerging, there is a G20 in this country. India is hating G20. What impression you are giving to the world? In fact, there is a... I am seriously telling you that for the first time, in the history of independent India, there is a 
very visible alliance and healthy alliance between the some metropolitan forces sitting in Paris, New York, London, okay. who believe balkanization of India, if not balkanization, then weakening the India, they don't, ex they don't uh, digest the emergence of Prime Minister Modi in the League of Putin, Biden, Morrison and Macron. Okay. They believe so, that Indian Prime Minister should remain uh, behind the, these, these big leaders. So, so, Prime Minister so, is setting agenda so, on climate. So, Prime Minister is setting agenda on the health. Prime Minister is setting agenda on the economic issues. G20, G7, India has been invited. All these things achievements. So, so Rohan Gupta. If there is a suppose, Gupta, I can see the position. Can, can I? Can just, I? Just uh, let uh, me uh, complete. Just, yeah. just give me one, one ten second. Ten second. Okay. Give me ten second. Just let me. Suppose I, I uh, for a second, I consider the position is right. Is it? genuine that you are disrupting the question of zero hour. Okay. I am more than thousands of crore or hundreds of crore rupees of taxpayer. It is the, we have, we prepared our question. Representing different section of the people, migrant workers, tribal, Dalits and the marginalized people. Okay. Knowing that, that's a fair point. Doing. So let me ask that to Rohan Gupta. Let me ask that to Rohan Gupta. It's okay to disrupt the normal uh, sessions of, of parliament, but question hour and zero hour which is not a government or opposition thing. It's meant for all members of parliament who represent their constituents to ask questions of the government. Even ruling party MPs ask questions of the government. The track record, in fact, the statistics, the data I have it with me, for the Lok Sabha this session, the uh, uh, question hour, the amount of time that has been spent on question hour is 19%. For the Rajya Sabha, which Professor Sinha is a member of, the amount of time spent on question hour is 9%, less than 10%. So, Rohan, what sense does that make? I mean, it's in the opposition's interest, in the members of the opposition, their interest to corner the government on these questions during question hour. By disrupting question hour and zero hour, you are only, you know, making your own case difficult, your own life difficult and that of your constituents difficult. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Rohan. And the selective as I started in the why this government is afraid of JPC? It's very simple. If something has happened in the economy, we can see that shares of particular group has gone down drastically by 50 to 60 percent. Lakhs and crores of rupees of the common people have gone down, have been washed away overnight. Don't you feel that is a matter of concern for the whole country? Don't you feel that is a matter of concern of more than 120 crore people? And if this government, our, our only request is JPC, that's it. They are talking about zero hour, they are talking about question hour, but why not the whole parliament? Had they appointed JP, the parliament would have been done. It's all about the arrogance of BJP because they are shying away, whether it is farmers issue, whether it is North Bank, whether it is China issue, they will always shy away from JP because they know if JP is appointed, they will be exposed. So it's not about not, appoint, not, not appointing JP, it's about, it, it's about, you know, having fear of being caught. That is where BJP is coming from. And they are trying to stop opposition, the crush the voice of opposition by using their arrogance, by using their power, by using their authority. We cannot succumb to that. People of the country, they have seen that we have raised the okay. concerning the people, whether BJP will allow us to run parliament or not, but we will continue raising one, the voice. One thing is, and I think this is the saddest part between, you know, the opposition and the government, the people of India are stuck. Like I said, 166 crores is the amount of money that's gone down the drain just in this one session alone. The 17th Lok Sabha, the current Lok Sabha, could end up becoming the shortest tenure session of parliament uh, ever in the history of parliament since 1952. But uh, that is the reality of our political situation today. Talking about politics and one big...